Okay, so I'm Yashar Bazadi. Uh, I run product development and data sciences at Proteus. We're a 200-person strong company. We've been around for about seven, eight years now. Um, and we're doing some pretty cool things, so I'll tell you about that. Um, just before that, I want just going to do kind of a couple of quick surveys. How many of you have ever taken one of these? A pill of any kind? Well, guess what? Everybody. How many of you um, know somebody that's dealing with a chronic condition? Diabetes, hypertension, schizophrenia, heart failure, everybody, it affects every single one of us. How many of us, how many of you are either taking care of somebody who's sick? You know, a mother, a father, son, daughter, yeah. So it's, it's a story that everybody can relate to. I mean, me personally, my, my grandma has, you know, advanced dementia, and I'm always wondering if, you know, she's doing okay, if she can take care of and do her daily activities of life and, and getting by. And, and really when Proteus was founded, it was founded by some serial entrepreneurs um, in the Silicon Valley who have kind of come in and out of and done and had successful exits in the medical device space and they decided to do something much more significant. And the ambition of Proteus is to completely disrupt how medicine is practiced, as crazy as that sounds. So, so what are we doing? Um, we have developed three platform technologies that talk together. The first one you can't see it from here, but it's about a millimeter cube sensor. It's an ingestible sensor that we embed into medicines. Um, we work with uh, global pharmaceutical companies to base effectively digitize their portfolios of pharmaceuticals. Upon ingestion, it interfaces with the electrolytes in your stomach, powers up, and sends a unique signal identifying the medication you just swallowed. That talks to our second platform technology, which is our wearable sensing. Um, this is one uh, form of that. This is a smart Band-Aid. Uh, it's a disposable, it's ultra low cost. It costs, it, it, it can wear it by a week at a time. We have reusable form factors as well for more longitudinal use. This picks up the pill signal, decodes it. Um, also has a, a ECG channel, so it captures your heart rate, heart rate variability, uh, um, and other analysis on, on that ECG morphology waveform. As a three axis accelerometer, and since it's adhesive to your body, you get your posture, sleep position, sleep quality, you're running out of battery here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, activity, everything you can get from your fitness bands and your other wearable products, uh, temperature, galvanic skin response, and from Bluetooth, it goes to our third piece of our platform, which is the mobile phone, which everybody has in their pocket. And there we have therapeutic specific applications, um, and then what talks to our back end and all the analytics um, behind our, our system are, are really meant to identify you know, what medication is right for you, what dosing re regimen is correct, and provide insights to the doctors to actually have information when they see you to make those decisions. And better yet, maybe one day it'll do it automatically, all by itself. So I just wanted to show you a little snapshot. Um, so this system is real, FDA approved, it's commercially available. Uh, we're doing uh, many uh, pilot studies right now, both in the US and in the UK. Um, we're partnered with uh, global pharmaceutical companies, um, as I mentioned before. And this, this particular example I pulled, um, for me it's very poignant. This is actually an 84 year old man living in the UK um, who's dealing with dementia. His son put him on the system because he wanted to make sure he was doing okay. And what we're showing here on the x-axis is days on the system, and the y-axis is time of day. And each data point represents about a half hour um, and the activity states that the person was in. Um, and the white uh, blips on the screen, if you can see that, are all the ingestions that he had. So for the first time, you can have a really detailed conversation with your doctor and caregivers about the therapeutic, uh, uh, the, physio the therapy you're taking, the physiologic response, and kind of the behavioral aspects of optimizing that therapy. Um, so, you know, our ambition, as kind of I told you before, is to really disrupt medicine and bring information and, and data into play. So, so I, what I'm going to do is actually pass around. I think I'm the only one that's actually handing out product. So I'm going to pass around some ingestible sensors. Uh, don't eat the card, please. Thanks. <laughs> that's just for show and tell. Yeah, there's a couple other proteans running around. Um, and just, just to say, um, the reason I'm here is just not only to kind of build a little more awareness about our company, but we're hiring a lot. So if you're an engineer, data scientist, uh, clinician, uh, software engineer, anything, come talk to me. Um, we're probably going to hire you. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's open it up to questions. What is this pill we're going to Oh, so that, that is a, one of the ingestible sensors. You can see it there. It's about a millimeter uh, cubed and in total volume. It's kind of suspended right there in a, a little see-through window. 
so you kind of just check it out. Um, well, so when we work with pharmaceutical companies, we actually work to embed that into the drug during at, at manufacturing. So for the, the finished product, it looks just like a normal pill. It's embedded. Um, how does it not get digested by the stomach acid? So it's effectively 99% uh, uh, silicon dioxide, which is sand. It passes right through you. Your body is very, very good at uh, dealing with sand. If you've ever been to the beach or had your older brother <laughs> kicks dirt in your face. So uh, it depends on what the data is, the jurisdiction, and, and the source. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, speaking of the HIPAA, is it, uh, it, do you have any plans to link this up to electronic health records uh, with uh, the larger providers and even the physicians? Sure. So, so the question is, do we have uh, plans to integrate this data into other, other systems? Um, the answer is, you know, our, question, our, our philosophy is that data belongs to the patient. It's a patient-centric system. If the patient chooses to share their information because it brings value to them, they're, they're free to do so. And we, we hope that it integrates broadly um, over time. What's the, what's the main challenge that you guys are facing right now? What have you noticed to be the main difficulty in, in development of the technology? There's a lot of technical challenges uh, for, for doing this. Um, I think we've retired all those uh, over our time. Uh, we went through the clinical, clinical and regulatory challenges in our history. Um, we're at the, the bridge of commercialization right now and adoption. Um, I think a lot of the difficulties are the newness and, and how it changes kind of the practice, you know, and the flows. Um, and, you know, it's really about educating people on how you to use this type of information and, and to, to really drive care, right? Do you think this has a scope of changing the health insurance market? So the question is, does it could potentially change health insurance? Um, I think what, so what we're focused on is really about efficiency into the healthcare system, which is outcomes by cost. Right, so all the conversations now are, right, are about where do you put the cost bucket and how do you move it around. We're going to blow that up. We want to completely change that. The value is about the, 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 the patient um, and them getting better at a lower cost to everybody. So we think the data is how you get that. And you've seen it in every other industry. It's time for it to happen in medicine. Is it right here? Tell us data. Is there anything So the sensor itself, as, as in the V1 product, is just a beacon that you swallowed a particular medication and, and the dose levels. So, and actually the, the main, if, if you look at uh, the literature out there, about 50% of medications are not taken or taken correctly. Um, and we have no information if the medicine that you're taking is even the right medication for you, right? So for us, it's understanding when you're taking your medication and linking to a physiologic response and being able to separate non-adherence from non-response and, and titrating you correctly and then being, keeping you uh, steady and stable on, on therapy. So it's, 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 it's intended to be embedded in the pill until if, if, if you're taking it, not, what, not, it doesn't say what you took. It, it does tell you what you took. Every single pill in the supply chain will be uniquely identifiable, so we can tell you what data came off the factory floor. So the uh, second element, the stickable sensor, where do most people wear that? How long do they wear it? You want people to wear it for 10 years, 24 hours a day? Sure. So the question is about our wearable platform and, and what is the, the wear profile. So it is a platform. This is one iteration that I'm showing you here. It's a disposable form factor. So this is used primarily for short-term use, um, things like 30-day rehospitalization prevention if you're just being discharged for uh, heart failure. Um, we, we do it for a lot of titration uh, studies as well, you know, two weeks, six week, 12 week use cases. It's generally worn on the torso, um, and that's a nice balance of the different physiologic measures and uh, de detecting the pill as well. We have other form factors. We have a, a loose wearables program, which is just like every other wearable um, in, in the space right now as well. Um, and we have uh, reusable form factors as well. This is, we see both of these as very much a platform. So over time, you know, years down the line, uh, the sensor itself that's ingested will be doing more than just beaconing that it, it did something, and the wearable sensing will, will change as well. How long does this take to activate once you swallow it? So the question is about activation. Um, the way it actually works is that it's a, uh, it's very akin to the potato battery that you might have, uh, experiment you might have done in school. You do similar metals in an electrolyte solution, it creates a battery. You're the potato, and the two similar uh, metals are on, on the, the, the chip. It takes about a minute or so to, to activate. In the back. Oh, I guess last question. Lady in the back. Oh, 
so, yeah, so, the, so the question is, uh, what's our focus? Um, and, the, and the focus is, as you can see, it's, it's broadly applicable to many therapeutic areas. Um, so we're doing right now commercial uh, uh, pilots in cardiovascular diseases, uh, neuropsychiatric diseases, metabolic conditions, um, and also situational. Um, so looking at uh, working with clinics, working with hospitals, and working with uh, over-the-counter uh, solutions as well. So it's a very broad platform, and, and we hope to make it ubiquitous one day. Cool. Thank you, Paradise Digital Health.